What do you say, Loy? No, twist it. Twist it. Pop it. Flick it. <laughs> oh, that's broke. I didn't know it was like, I don't know. Ah, sure, whatever. Alright, okay. Don't wash that inside, okay? Um, what were you saying there? What the? Any reason why you should be looking up at me in the cab? Hey, Ford, 10 foot there, son. At least we didn't come here for one angle. Where's the harvester, lad? Harvester would need to get hurried up. I don't know. They were they're covering. What time are we here for ten o'clock? What time is it now? They're, he says he's covering a silage pot and he's never offered to cover any pots for me, so I don't know. We need to be hurrying up. But I oh, will get it on. You buck rake in the day? Buck rake in the day. So there's no there's not much stem on that. Like. It's well soft of itself. So. You should do the taste test, Joe. Uh, no thanks. It's cold as well, like that's a good sign. There, I have no sense of smell or just COVID. There's not much. <laughs> Stand back. <laughs> There's not much there. We put the cover back to the top of the ramp this time. It's only 40 acres, so 20 load will be so on it. I thought 10 maybe be so on it. No, no, no. There's, there's actually, I was surprised you whenever you get on it now. I, last time I thought I would try a wee bit and I did. There's two 8 acre blocks and a 30 acre block. And I thought I would try an experiment, half experiment and half because I was too lazy to start laying slurry pipe out. And uh, I didn't bother spraying the slurry on the 30 acres, so it just got 40 units of nitrogen. No slurry. The rest of it got like watery summer slurry. Like there's not much in it. And it's unbelievable the difference. Like, you know, the, the two eight, eight acre blocks is good grass, the 30 acres is iffy. Okay. So now I'll be getting slurry this time. <laughs> you sure the slurry or what? <laughs> mm. Just a lot of stuff happened in the one go, so they, uh, I never got around it. How's your, um, how's your arable been this year? Tonnage? Arable's been good. Uh, we have vanished. Well, there's only 50 acres stall there. Um, we had 60 acre of Ami Star, which is a six row variety, and that did 4 tonnes an acre, three, probably 3.8 when the time was dried. The straw was sort of disappointing, it was only 6 bales an acre. Um, I had Oro Well, and the Oro Well looked rubbish all year, and that's ended up doing about 3 and 3 quarter tonne when it was dry. Uh, about 10 bills to the acre, so it was really good. And then we've moved on to Valerie, and it did, it did about four ton dry, but down the straw again, down to six bills. So the oil well, even though it was slightly less yield than the grain, was probably better profit altogether with straw being 50 pound a bill this year, whatever it is. So, um, no, we we're, we were well impressed with, it. impressed with it this year. We put 110 units of nitrogen on, and then the rest of it was slurry and dung and whatever, so. So you don't sell that much straw, do you? Don't sell any straw. Use it all, so. But at the same time, you still have to sell the straw from the cereal enterprise to the dairy enterprise. What price would straw be before you'd be like, you know what, we could do without this straw? <laughs> what, what the price it is this year is the price that that, 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 that happens. But at, uh, whenever you're betting the highs, 20 pound a bill, any more than that, then it becomes a luxury. Like. But then the other way to look at it is that if we don't, bed the highs and we don't get any dung. If you don't get any dung, you have to buy more fertilizer. Oh, it's nice thing. I read a thing the other day and they're selling straw in England for 40 or 50 pound an acre. And everybody was saying, no good, you're better chopping it. You're better putting the bag on the ground. It's, it's more beneficial for you to chop it and put it on the ground than it is for you to get 40 pound an acre for the straw. Uh, and start to buy the replacement. So there, uh, there's, that's what you're working on. Like shows you like you know people don't think about what you know the, the straw you're taking off it and what you'd have to replace it with yes it's been a good summer i just said like it was decent dry yeah. spell we got the rain we needed the rain uh, we and it's dried up again and harvest can on no more um, uh, well i wouldn't say no more they uh, our, our dry spell the dry spell came two weeks early for us we had one day or two days cutting and we had 80 acres cut and I said to Dad, it was the first dry, the dry spell we got that three or four weeks in a row. He says, you know, we could have 800 acres on. You wouldn't think twice about you know, cutting 800 acres. You had this weather. Rain for three weeks after that. 
Like, you know, and we get nothing done and we've nearly been out the combines, but right every day it's been dry. And we've just finished, and that's only 200 acres. But I mean, we were Wonder Barley, we only finished our Wonder Barley uh, last week, 7, 20, 23rd of August was our finish in Wonder Barley, and that's us cutting for the 23rd of July. And there's 200 acres, and that's us out every dry day, so it sort of tells you there's not too many, there wasn't too many dry days, but. Will you ever part with the Red Rocks? <laughs> Dad said this year, he says, uh, Ah, oh, we could be doing with changing a forklift, but what are you going to get them? What, what, what do you think they're worth? Private seal, I don't know, would you get 20 like? At a push? But they won't last forever. You're going to feed parts to them forever like? Uh, here, we bought a, that 280 a year and a half ago, oh. and we haven't put a part on her. Oh. What a rod. That's a kraken! Is that broke? Oh, that's not a drive on now. Oh, come on, you. That, that 300, she got a big, she got five grand spent on her last year, the same time as we brought the 280. Somebody reversed into a silly spot and bust the bonnet and like, new fuel pump. She's come home and hasn't wrote down once. Like. And as a 420 JCB at 100 grand, is going to do any better than what a 15 grand Red Rock's going to do like for 300 days of the year. <laughs> Dead, like, you know. 420 on real and silly spot, like that's six days a year. Aye. You know? And we you, have. You buck rake most of yours, or you only get them in when you need Lions came the last two cuts, so it was purely just, well, one, because we were tired and we couldn't be bored, and two, we were trying to get beyond and harvest done, and, and me and dad buck rake, and if dad's driving the combine or I'm driving the baler, you nearly need two red rocks in the pit to make a thing work. So if one of you is busy, you just, you're just you better just to get the Volvo one. So that's yes. what's happened. Okay. The last two times, but it's only been four. But anyway, you'd be better saving your Volvos or saving your that's Red Rocks for doing the yard work. Yeah. And not you know, torturing them with this crag like. Exactly. It's only just we're putting forty acres on today. The next cut, whenever six cut comes on, there's like a hundred and something acres with maybe even two Volvos in the pit that day. Like. Aye, because it's going over the whole thing. It's going over the whole thing. That's a big long cart, like. big long draw. So, um, aye, as you say, what's the point of raking a Red Rock for one day? Is you know, for all the price of getting a contractor on, the, well, I don't even know what the contractor is on, the 50 or 60 pound an hour. Or That's I, not good, boys, when you don't know the price the contractor's charging you, hey? John's just that cheap, hey? He just, <laughs> you know, he just throws the Volvo on for free? Yes, yes, so. yes. Good big hand, he's out anyway, sir. Ah, uh, it's good, but. I broke Greg Downs, and it was one of them jobs, it was like, you said you would do it, and then you wish you hadn't. You go back, and you're through the first bay, and you're like, up the ramp, and you're like, oh, I'm at the back wall. Right, oh, that'd be nice. It's not a long path. <laughs> So I find you're better when, or you're better with a narrow or longer putt than you are with a wide short putt. Certainly, it's just like you like you like to be able to get the distance to push it off. Uh, once, once you're once up, you're on top, you like you to be up, able to push you go it up. up when you're at the back wall. It's like and there's not much room to push oh, it off. Now. Just keep pushing over the back wall. That's what I did. Uh. You did some great with the grip the other day. Was that one there the same width? That one's the same width and the same length. That there, that the red rock was hitting every. Every uh, stance in the way past, and then we still had I I had a ramp still out here, so I ended up having to go up and put two buck rakes in, pat it down, and then there was three people up on top, just leveled up with grapes. That's how we ended up, you know. So we've had that's as much silage as we've ever had in that pit. What's that at the bottom there? The real orange stuff? Is that just freshly cut? Whole crop. Whole crop. Uh, so we did forty-five acres of whole, or fifty acres of whole crop, twenty-eighth uh, of June, along with third cut. And then we uh, ploughed it, or we put 2,000 gallons of acre slurry on, ploughed it, and put oats into it. So that'll be due now, end of September, third of October. There's a wee bit of mould at the top of that pot, but that's again probably one, we didn't get tramping it well enough because the roof was there, yeah. and two, whoever moved the side of cover back moved it back too far the last time. Um, Move to back probably a bay where it only needs sort of this at this heat at this time of year it only needs sort of four feet. You know you're better rolling it back to your grab at a time. And if you ever rolled it back, rolled it back a full bay. So as you can see the different grass, like you'll see the top three or four feet there is like a silage, it's like a brownie silage, and then there's four feet that are black. Yep. That's the difference. That's the Italian hybrid grass at the top, and then that's the perennial grass with a clover in the middle. 
and you can see how much extra protein is going to be in that middle slice. So that, even out there, you know, because that's getting cut every so every four weeks, that's pure black the whole way down. Like. There's a slur in that pot too. That's sort of our protein pot, and this is our starch pot. What you need now, whatever time that tin's done, just you know, big roof out over the two. Uh, Set it about twenty foot higher. I don't know. I don't know how you would make. It's, it's well hard to know. It's well hard to get your money back for it. Does aye. We were looking at the price because they're making a big deal about roofing slurry tanks, outdoor slurry tanks. So we were looking the grant, the last grant that came out, uh, roof for a slurry or cover for a slurry tank was included. Priced it thirty six grand. And he says, oh, but you know, it would be a payback. It would be a payback of a couple of years because you wouldn't have to pump that water. You know, if you think of all the rain. I worked it out, 400 pounds a year. Pumps all the water from that tank that the rain supplies. Yes. So it's going to take like really paying off 30 80 years. <laughs> I'd be dead. Like. I still wouldn't <laughs> see that copper paid off. Like, you know, I don't know. Is that, uh, government. Have lovely ideas. Like. That cleaning the windows and everything. She's well trained. Send her at the vine next. If she can work, that spray bottle. Oh, she's got her now. Yes. Not there, seven, eight. Harley needs a polish. She's polished on her, on her life here now. Where did you get that top line from? Uh, QTP. Did you make the holder for her? No, no I come here. That's the one I need for the class. At um, the wee bracket come out. Oh, the wee holder and all? The wee stuck it up and job. I think it does. I don't have one for the glass. That, that's I need to weld it on. You maybe come someday and you need the top links been changed. It's real handy. Oh, that's the exact one. I. Yep. Simple as that. Like. Glass is the same. Have you heard of a thing like? Oh, I. It's a, a two a two handed lift. Some job though. Whenever you see you what I mean, now he must have had he must have had this in the pan down here, cousin Andrew. He must have put her in that pan. But you see the this leg has now got a nice wee bend. And there's a, there's, a, there's a knock on her there and there. See the two notches. What a man. What a man. The wee tiller's starting to fade badly. She's been sitting out in the rain too long. I can't get nobody to keep her in below the roof all winter. She was bad. Why is she getting badly? Is that just from her laying out? Was she like that whenever you bought her, no? No, she washes up real nice. I should go to that red at the bottom of her still. Well. Not just to that. Not quite, but. She looks good when she's wet, put it that way. <laughs> as long as you're left inside it's raining. Do you put new tires on her or not? On this? Uh, no, she's coming in with good, good tires on her when they good tires on her. I let her go again once the tires is done. Ah, oh, you get the same money for get her? Same money for her. <laughs> You've made a clean fortune, carton grass. <laughs> I don't think there's a clean fortune to be made carton grass. <laughs> no, definitely not. If there is, can somebody let me know how to do it? I know men that wouldn't even hire tractors to go to that. No, I here. We were doing it and, and there's zero enjoyment on it. Because you're going to the harvester, it's 9900 John Deere. You fill the trailer for two minutes. Yes. And then you're on the road for two hours. Yeah. And that's just your day, like. Yep. It just sucks loading, you're going to home. It doesn't. You may as well then lorry, like. It's getting that way, like. When's he coming? Can we not go and put a little straw on her? No, I'll be here. Well, tell me at 10 o'clock, he's leaving in half an hour. So I can't imagine he's far away. I'm on chopping the bed. He is just ready to rock. Top two fine, probably. You three quarter knife on you? No, I have a bit here. I 20, 22 mils in the back of the year. I have a bit of 15 there, whatever. Aye, well, aye, 22 or 30 or somewhere, aye. I'll be dead on. Are you follow up or you have closed? No, I'll follow up with Green's then. The Brave Vulcan, though? I 
Tom will head out to get here. First load of grass this year. Somehow my year has been so mad that I just didn't have time for it. So because I didn't cart Alan's grass for the buck rake did instead. This is the first load I've pulled with the red rock. But a busy, busy year. So because all of last year we were in Northern Ireland filming. It's been really important to me that we got out and about and over to England and Wales and Scotland and down into the heart of the Republic of Ireland to um, bring some variety back to Farmplex beyond Northern Ireland. So I have been all over. I've been to some new terrain as well. Probably the new spots for me would be in Wales and then particularly north of Scotland, the furthest up before this I'd been was Inverness. I've been beyond Inverness now. I've not been to John O'Groats, but I've seen the sign for John O'Groats. The old 7-8 has been in for uh, repairs again. Did a bit of dumper work with her and she burst an oil pipe and blew a gab, just old and perished. And he, he got it spliced and joined and repaired, but he said the other one beside it was starting to look the same starting to look like it's going to go. With those two replaced, I had an oil leak that had developed a little bit around the back end. She was doing her best new haul the impersonation that she could. And uh, not massive leak or nothing, but just enough to be dirty in the yard and annoying me. So I wanted to find that. And as well as that, she started to develop a bit of a, a rattle or a thump whenever you hit the, hit the right bump. So the, the cap points dumpers or whatever they're called they've all been replaced now as well so, more money more money spent on her she's uh she's turned into an expensive hobby but i'm very much of the fix it now and it'll be done and you know what you have mindset that's john lyons up in the harvester himself So this thing will be looking good for the video as well. Shady, clean. She's been to Shane's Castle this weekend. The wee Steve Butter Rally London show that um, invited us along. And we're sort of on top of the filming. I wanted to, I wanted to get out and wait and meet people and see what people were thinking. There's nothing beats meeting people that watch Farm Flex face to face. And, seeing what they are thinking about what we're doing. I'll probably not get another load of that bill, but I'll probably have to go back just to be sure. Sort of job. This GoPro up here is actually rather unpleasant to work with, because whatever's about the wee LED screen or LCD screen on it, um, it seems to fade away once it gets started, turned on and recording, it, it fades away and it doesn't show well on the display. But if you squint at it, you can see the wee red LED blinking, which usually means it's recording. But yet you have to squint at it all the longer to make sure it is blinking because we got caught out. I did a video with the tail end last year away. Cleat. Lost one of my angles because it was solid red and it locked up and froze just at the start of the interview. The whole thing was lost. So, what can you do?
there's all right. So love the car all for a visit. Um, I just came up because everybody in the YouTube comments said they wanted to see the 78 on a play. I thought who is plenty of playing, who is a nice farm. Cars all came to mind. <laughs> so uh, I found him there after Shane's Castle on the weekend and it says what's crack any playing on or any any work on? And he says, Yeah yeah, grass can end on Tuesday. So here we are. Forty acres of fifth cut. The multi cut system. I get the multi-cut thing and six cuts is ambitious but like how does that work? Everybody talks about you need six or eight weeks to get the nitrogen out. Like how, how do you manage that? Well we're we're putting on 40 units of nitrogen and our ground average ground takes two units a day of nitrogen so that's 20 days worth. We were finding our ground's using two and a half to three units a day. So that's going so if I put 40 units of nitrogen on with liquid fertilizer and 1500 gallon of slurry on that's well out by the 28 days or 30 days in the month. Okay. We tested the first two months, so we did it to make sure it was all out. How do you keep the wastes down? Like you're not getting much wastes there between between cuts. Not there actually. We just noticed this time. The f if you can see the six, the bottom six foot is orange. Yeah. The cling film we ran out of cling film. It only came down to six foot up, and then it's I don't know if it's pickled or what you would call it. So the gas that can't escape from the cling must be coming out and pickling down below. I've never seen that before, but we use that was only one one cling film and one black plastic, wasn't it? And an, uh, there's an additive on there. It's a bioman additive, and it seems to do a good job now. But we put on two new covers every year, yes. and then if the covers are still brave and good from last year, we'll put them on too. But usually, by the time you open the pit five times and then open it to feed out, they're inaccurately. I want to own that. I, it's in the cling film, and I thought that was made a big difference. Oh, the cling film's a good job. We didn't use it until last year, and we're finding the black plastic's getting thinner. It's either thinner and it stretches and put holes in it, or else it's thicker and it's more brittle and you put holes in it. So we went to the cling, it definitely seems to have improved the grass now. For There's very little, the only mould there is up the wall, and that's because the black plastic we're using is too narrow. And like it's just touching the wall no more. So that explains <laughs> that, like you know, I'm not going to say it's, the, it's, the, it's anything else, it was our fault completely. So. Today, coming up here. Uh, she's just been serviced, so just after putting a fuel filter on her to be sure. But maybe she was a wee bit lazy. Went right over the Glen Chain Pass with empty chiller. Uh, that was 35k we were down to at a stage. And we had. Uh, or just riding the underside of the the red line of the temperature gauge. So you run right up to the red line of the temperature gauge. That is a long pole. Didn't smell her now, I did open the one there not, just to be sure, like uh, just a steady bit of torture, I don't know, about about soaring a tractor pulling full load up that. Just the sheer amount of time you're on. Not needed. I wasn't as confident as he was. Heard that. Lex 
walks in on the fin next door. That was where we bailed about a hay lodge or hay. It was always going to be hay and then uh, turned out it wasn't hay. Uh, and we brought it home and it was 28% moisture and we covered it this way cling foam. Just, you know, the cling yeah. that you put in the silage, but it was an old bit that was lying there. Covered it and left in a month and it turned into the haylage. <laughs> and you sort of wonder why people wrap and wrap and wrap and wrap. But there was only 12 bales. Now you wouldn't do it if you had 200 bales sitting there, but it, it worked out all right. But we just took a cover off it the other day because the silage will be touching it. We didn't want to post it, puncture it. So, Carshall Farm, if you haven't seen the Ag Life series uh, on Farmflex, is split by a railway line. Um, gates have to be shut every time in between crossings. I was asking Ali this morning, what way does that work in the settings? Do you just leave it open for the duration of the settings, or how do we work it? He says, I had a ring him at sea. He says, it just depends on who's on and what they say. And I'm supposed to close these gates, so I'd better. We're farming 260 pedigree hosting cattle, milking, along with 250 acres of cereal to help feed and uh, bed them. All together we're farming about 600 acres of scattered ground. On this farm we're fond of a, a small project or two. In the past we've made an accumulator for the back of our baler. This year we weren't really doing very much, so we decided to buy a bundle lorry uh, to try and change into a self-propelled, self-contained slurry machine. So the other thing we did last year, we put up a 630,000 gallon mirror slurry store, which takes us up to just over a million gallon of storage. But now we're trying to make it as handy as possible. So we, we're trying to put a mains line from this tank under the ground to the far side of the railway line. At the moment we're uh, lengthening our milk compiler. To milk the whole thing, we would need five, maybe six robots. And that is 600, nearly 700,000 pounds. With this wall built here now, and we're starting to build there, there'll be eight irons going across, hopefully tomorrow. It's nice to see the next generation coming through and just trying to support them as best they can. It's not easy working with family some of the time, but I appreciate them handing or giving me run of the place because I know at a lot of places you wouldn't get that. Fantastic bit of ground down here. If there's anywhere in Northern Ireland, you'd love to own a farm. Limavati would be up there. I think it was six episodes from Carsall here. Mixed dairy and horrible. The two seem to be a nice compliment for each other. All these Clearly got a machinery bias. He has plenty of kit about him. Those are his own two iron trailers. 7030, T7 there, the black rims. Take a lot of care and attention to the cows as well. Do a lot of cow scoring and, and that kind of thing. I know nothing about that world of pedigree cows and how they're graded, but we saw the guy that came over and did that last year. And I, I pretend to understand what he's talking about. So we're looking for stature, height at front end, which is whether they're walking uphill or downhill, um, chest width, body depth, which is taken at the last rib, angularity, which is the angularity of the ribs, rump angle, two and one are reverse tilt, means the rump's sloping forwards, which is what are not desirable. You ideally want a four, five, six, which is a slight slope. You don't want too much slope. So this is his field of the CERN. Yes, 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 yes. So it's not cut, it must be going on the sixth cut then. He's already grass around the headland of it so that he can prevent too much tramping on the turn itself whenever it's moved. Sixth cut will be the first week in October. Really, everybody's obsessed with grain compaction and you're included in that list. Yes, I am. Um, <laughs> how can you justify taking heavy machinery to take a sixth cut in October? Um, <coughs> That's a good question. <laughs> uh, oh, to be fair, I never really, I never really compacted that much. I, I, you know, I would have pegged you as a man that would, would like controlled traffic but hasn't gone that far yet. Aye, that's, I would, mm, 
Pro oh, you're probably you right. Can't, you can't control Thriller Man. Like, they go everywhere. You can't, no. Well, you can try. You can <laughs> shoot, like. But Thriller Man are uh, Thriller Man and women included. Like, yeah. there's the gate, straight line to it. Lucerne's hard work. Like, I, the last couple of times, Lucerne hates compaction. The last couple of times I've had to go to the pit because I just hate watching Thriller Man. Hate it. On Lucerne, like, you, you can tell them all day long, one strip up the field, go on top no matter watching your trailer and some of them turn around and go back up the field with the trailer half full and not falling, it just rags me, so I had to go to the pit a couple of times, like, but, um, <laughs> oh, hey, grass in October, you can afford to take a bit of wetter grass, so you probably could mow and grip and leave it for two, you know, leave it for 48 hours to let the ground dry. Ah, uh, so we did that two it's years ago. It's more about ago. managing the ground than it is about uh, the grass. Yeah. At this stage of the season, it's more about cereals, and if you get your cereals done, it's about keeping the ground ready for next year. You know, you're only literally just taking whatever you can get off it. But our cut this time is very good, and I fully expect, I, f I would expect to get the same again, six cut, like, you know, I'm hopeful. I think we'll get a good cut. September's always good. Always, always good. Never famous last bad, words. Never had a bad September in, I don't know how many years. No. So this is the time of year, this time last year, we were still trying to get percentage episodes gathered up. We had one with my cousin Richard, we had one with David Gray, we had one with David Hicks, because the whole of first cut was the pantomime of the first lockdown. Whereas this year, we went at it hard. I mean, we have new guys on the team. And it's good to see fresh blood, and just different people bring a different perspective. Conversation's gonna be different, all that good stuff. So now this is the time of year where we look at our variety. You know, we've got quite a few harvests on there now as well. We'll be looking for plowing, drilling. So come October, November time, we're kind of done. We're kind of. It's a short day to go out filming with the crew. There's not going to be as much happening. It's very much the livestock are all indoors and it's all about feeding cattle. There's no land work. There's no slurry. Everyone's on the maintenance cycle. It's a big lump of a fill. I drag my way around there and hasn't come back. This time last year was down here over there videoing Johnny Kelly. <laughs> I'm still not convinced I wasn't even back there, but we'll, we'll see, <laughs> we'll see. Last year, video we probably at the Sedditch, one of the jobs, they ranked you, they haven't got it to mow. Right? <laughs> okay, when are you laughing at? They're coming here at 5 o'clock at night. It's been a while since we've done a nighttime lifting thing. It's worked out quite nice actually, some of the shots look really well, but there's sort of an old misery of rain come on, it was wasn't like perfect conditions for it, but any stretch. Look good. The one lesson I learned was you can turn the lights off on the front of the drone. They're like wee lights that um, flash to let you know where she is. But what it did was it must be some kind of reflection off the body of the drone as they blink. So there's like a strobing effect on some of the shots. I ruined some of my footage, basically. Long story short. The beautiful thing about down here is no wires. Same as houses, but actually you use very little. A lot of footage in the, I mean, the episode was one of the things that's just linking from nighttime to day job. And, uh, 
we need some more of it here now. Hoping for the train to pass through the shots at some point, you will fully let up. Oh, almost up in the actual now. Here. That train coming far away. <laughs> sure enough, I landed the drone, put it in the hand. Wait a second there, there comes the train. I broke my own rule. Never turn the camera off. Oh, I'll let you, I'll end up breaking it if I touch it. 
Arms up. Right, Chief. Up in the race. You don't do much more right, will you? No, because I'm not going to go for the game. I'm not going to go for the game. No, I think you see it's already in. I can't get all of them, but I've got real gun, all of the loots for all I so I'm at 70 30. I think it's just um, H2 here. It may look like I'm doing a great bad bounce in here, but it could be worse, could be a little there. Bit rusty. There's our corner. John. You got me a good tractor. You don't need to get rid of them. I had new Holland's place. I assume Ollie will want this through it, right? The lane. Look at that, Ollie. Get out and open the gate for you. Is there a button down there for a joystick? It's not a button down, but you want to walk for a second. Take it off before it can get off. Now take it off, turn it off, and turn it back on. The only thing is, when you get off, now you'll not get back up. Maybe a fuse away, but she's servo. I don't think she's electric joystick. Did she do that before or no? Reverse her off because you'll not get her lifted high enough to... Flipping handlings. Up to me down John this morning but then them Red Rocks don't break down. I see the sea wall to my right. And they have to pump water out of that back over the sea wall. This is like a spillage zone, I guess, or what you know, we'll call it the flooding zone. It's like they can absorb a lot of water in this bank between here and that field. But they have to pay the cost of the electricity to pump a lot of water back off the property when there's heavy rain. I guess it's the cost of having good fertile land claimed from the sea. That's the sort of land the old one would have been. Pretty rough on. Yeah, that's working hard. Sometimes when we go filming uh, in certain places, it seems to be you end up always back in the same block of ground or the same field. I remember in England one time, for Wilson's. One particular fit that sits at the edge of the M6. It must have been in it four times, just the way it all worked out. That's one where Jamie stuffed the 700 to the spout with the grass. It fell off a cliff on the engine revs and no torque. And uh, this wheel is actually one of the ones I seem to end up doing a lot of stuff on the car saw. So, it's her own, that's good. Let's have a good look. Green light there as well. You don't want to be complacent. Enjoy the best of fruity refreshments. Lipton Beach Ice Tea.
say hello to that lady Actually, it's happened. Probably on Facebook there this year, I seen the chaser must have had some kind of collision. You know, a square wheel chaser like a heath. But by all accounts, everybody walked away from it, which is extremely lucky because trains are an unforgiving beast. The sort of thing that they look like they're coming, they don't look like they're coming that fast, but if you actually point the camera, square on and let it come through the shot like that. It, um, it hits the shot with some speed. Need to get the door straight. There are two tutors that just have to put. Well, it's minus, so I dump it out. I'm going to have to Connor's not going to abuse her anyway. So we've had a bit of a break from our YouTube. Some people wonder why we, why we stopped. Uh, we probably said it at the time in the video, but certainly this stage of the year, I'm you know, I'm, I'm back up doing this today. I haven't really missed it, but we're back. It's, uh, it's useful tool for us for bits and pieces of filming that just wouldn't quite make an episode. Bits and pieces of afterwards, um, kind of showing you what goes on behind the scenes. And Farmflex, that's the whole reason the channel exists, is because of Farmflex. Farmflex is, is what we actually do for a living. Some people, you know, they follow us on YouTube, but they don't actually see what we do. Uh, that's where the good stuff is. I don't think we're putting more than on. We're back on YouTube, but we're not going down the every Friday thing. I was finding myself, if I'm honest, the Fridays are becoming a chore. You know, I'd, I'd much rather that when we put a video out, something we wanted to make. Um, I'm up here to get the blend, which we're not making today, but, well, I'm here. I was delivered to drag her up anyway. And I thought, well, sure, we'll just make a wee vlog while we're at the grass. Seeing as I'm not doing any grass this year, I'll have, I'll draw a couple of them. I wanted to make that. It's just like that. Uh, if I want to make something, I'll make it, and we'll publish it, and uh, it'll be all good. I hate that I spray. See that I spray? Look at, look at my bonnet now. It's just like, ah. Uh, but it's the only way to come in at the right angle for him. While he's on the phone, but he's not having to turn that spout up. See? Stay under. Just like that. We've also got merchandise this season, guys. Uh, we're going to. We've got that many brand names on the go. We've got Farmplex. We've got Straight Six. We've got Ag Life, we've got Stockyards, so the decision was made after much agonising, much overthinking, which I am often guilty of, as is Mr. Clyde, my accomplice in overthinking, and uh, Ag Life is the brand, people. Ag Life, everybody's got their own version of the Ag Life. For some men, it's contracting. For some men, it's milk cows. For some people, it'll be... A support service they're offering a farmer welding gates or relief milking. In my case, I'm living the ag life. I'm out filming these guys making documentaries. We're all living the ag life. And that's what ag life's all about. We are a special kind of people. We're a unique breed. There is a ridiculous work ethic, an obsession with being frugal with our money and getting value. Serious toys, I mean, look at the stuff we get to play with. Serious capital tied up on it. I mean, 
no one can get into this game unless they've got some serious backing. You're, you're born and raised in the world of farming. And we're all making our own little contribution to it one way or another. We're all getting it done. The trick to it is to try and enjoy the game. Try and enjoy it at the moment. This is me right now. Quite enjoy it. The new 70 and 10. That's 20 year old. We've got the Ag Life merchandise coming online this season. It's great when people support us and want to support us and want to buy the stuff. We're not a huge team. We're not some mammoth corporate outfit with hundreds of people and oceans of time. So what we do is we concentrate everything the way we want it. So we've got free time in the winter. So we're going to sell for the month of November and we'll see where we're at. So while I was at uh, Shane's Castle there the other day, pop most popular question about the 7-8, what do you think of the sea at tires? Honest truth, I have no opinion. <laughs> uh, this is the second day I have been in the seat. Never missed a bait, Buck Reagan never spun out once. Climb the house, as you'd expect with new tires. The plan should be a little bit of a test. Saying that ground conditions are not wet yet. Who knows what the back end will give us, whether it's rain or wet. You would want to put a thousand hours in set tires before you really could say for certain. These are wearing well. These are sticking to pace. They're gripping well. So on and so on. Um, in my opinion, that's how long it would take. That's what I love about Farmplex. What we do is I never make a beeline for anybody with something new to get their opinion out the gate because if they've only just bought it or they're still getting familiar with it they're not going to have anything resembling an owner operator opinion that's good value it's like a, you know, if you just spend a hundred grand buying some bit of machinery um, of course you're going to think it's good of course you're going to be very positive but if you've owned it for five years and you're thinking about trading in for another one and you tell me it's good I know you mean it What about Dennis? Big Dan, doing well He hasn't been looked at since you were here last <laughs> Yes I was impressed with your, your diesel statistics. My diesel statistics, yeah. I'm assuming right. you were telling the truth, eh? No, he has. <laughs> I haven't filled him up like since second cut. He hasn't had diesel on him. So he did second cut, third cut, fourth cut. And he'll probably spread now. And like, I checked him the last time, I was like, oh, he's bound to be nearly empty. Have you used the nurse body at all? I have, eh? Is it a good job? Uh, it's, it's the nurse body, man. He's able to do like I've had twenty ton on it, I've had four thousand gallon on it. I thought it would be like like for someone who's who's contracting, would it not be worth like actually as an investment to go into the effort oh, to do with you? One hundred percent. I don't know why there's not more. I was actually a couple of people have been down looking and saying oh. We'll answer him after. No, there's been a couple of people down looking at Dennis and a couple of big contractors. Like I only if I did two hundred hours a year. Uh, actually probably slightly more, there's about 250 hours on Dennis now and I'll have a week still to spread, so say even 300 hours a year that's 300 hours I'm saving what are them big contractors going to be doing? Aye 3,000 hours? Wouldn't probably wouldn't even look at someone Aye, but that's, that's engineers on a tractor that That's a tractor like? I'm saving uh, Although I do, I do, I do know the odd boy will run a, like, Russell's are on the separate engine to drive their pump Aye, oh, they, aye they do, but there's not too many folk around that have an engine set you know, there's contractors running fence, new masses, new John Deere's. You know, that's a hundred grand tractor sitting on a pump at a, a sixteen hundred pound panel oil pump. So. Well, what's the latest project? You're always a man in a project, Nico. You have the nursery to do. <laughs> uh, I've had the nursery to build, so. No, I actually there is a, there is probably a project to do, but I'm not going to do it this year. But it's a, I need to modify the build accumulator to go on the new builder. Yes. It's only at it holds. 
three three foot bills. Do you miss it now you know I got it? <coughs> I don't miss it. A boys chasing miss it. Nah, the boys chasing miss it, but I, it's uh, it's far nicer to be almost out of the ball. Ah, don't be at it. Jesus girl. Oh, please work. So about 6.30 I got this banging noise and it took me about half an hour of investigation taking guards off to find out what the issue was. I was sort of saying about the smell last night, maybe it smells like dead rats or dead mice or something on there. Whenever the bailer's going great, the a dream. Whenever it starts playing about. Ah, dirty brute! I need to go to three, three, four foot. But that's the thing about going to five, four foot bills. You know, have a, if it has to fold out anyway, may as well have a good folding out one. Or the other thing is that five bills would get you nearly to every headland. You just dump whatever's on it at the headlands. Aye. Control traffic, as you would say. Yes. I still have work to do in Dennis. I just. I worked that much on him until I got him working, he's working and I just left it. It's like a new house, you don't see it working at all. If there's like, no carpet on it, you I'm just really, leave it for three years? Yeah, like. yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll get that at some stage. <laughs> For a fifth cut, to be fair, Ali, this is uh, more grass than I was expecting. And it's not that old nasty, washed out looking, you know, stuff that you can get this time of year. It's actually a lovely, lush, green sward. Like, if you happen with that road first cut, never mind that. I'm getting too excited it's for a little line of tap in front of me. See what Lowe is like now when the camera's on her? Nope, not a good start. Open your back door, shut your back door, <laughs> shut your back door, yes, good call. been the last man in a run of the harvester waiting and being the first. When you're the first, you're always racing. When you're in the back, you don't have to give up with the person in front of you. Suppose you're the right person in number one. Being the number two slot would be tricky. Did you get in, they'll be very number one very quick. And just wait here, I think. Give way to the full load. I know that 
Bob's a bomb kick. I would like to throw his bar full in there, see in the front there. Got that sink. Get it up to the, the barley crab there. There you go. And then we head to the back. I'd love to know what Ollie's hit there. So I want to jump all the way down there to get across the headlock. I was just on the U turn. Doesn't get much better than this, if I'm honest. Green Mountain level would be into the job. Two's in here before we run out of gear. Today I am what I said I didn't want to be, which is number one. Hammer like hell. There's the main coming through. Yes. Anytime I'm like making videos and there's something like that in the background, it's like, oh, get the shot of the train, get the shot of the train. Not like a good stone lane and you can go hard down for rising dust. 50k then I live. Oh, no, no, no. Right, TLS is working. Oh, yes. I will put a smile on your face now. That's sort of work. What the raising some dust or I see the tires like from Shane's Castle and the tires are like dust colour now. <laughs> oh that's getting too rough, we're going hard there now, sure. Sword attractor, hey, sword attractor. Right, and up and out. finished here now. I have a lot more than what I was thinking. About one load every acre and a half. So I was sort of thinking four tons an acre, but it looks more like five or six. It isn't bad for a fifth cut at the end of August. So you can probably see it, the pit's full. 
anybody else than a farmer would look at it and say it's full, but a farmer hangs to himself. Sky's the limit, it's outside, so we'll look at it. We'll put six cut on top of it, we'll try and get it sort of domed to let the water run off it. But there's a hundred, that was only 40, 43 acres put in today, there's a hundred, 120 acres to put in a six cut. Uh, so there'll be a lot of grass, but. I can't see it running out. And the other thing about that grass is that it's all, there's more of it and it's, and it's better quality, so you should go through it slower because the cows don't need less to live on. We got the analysis back for the first two cuts. Um, first cut was 12.3 ME. 78 D value, 16 and a half protein. That was 36 NDF. Non digestible fibers, so the lower the number, the more that the cow is able to digest, as suggests in the name. So, um, yeah, for first, first year doing six cuts. So far, so good. We'll see what six cuts like. Is. I figure it is hard enough, we'll tear it or we'll try and get the grass dry, you know, so. Because the, because it's six cuts as well, the thing we're noticing is that it's a lot easier to dry, so if you mow it, if you mow it, tear it once and bring it in 24 hours after, it usually is sudden 35% dry matter. Which is great. No sliding, you don't need any black plastic up the sides of the walls. But we'll see. Every year's different. We got our side of the first going on the 24th of April. Oh. Um, no, give me a few seconds, I'm just reversing off here now. It's very easy to forget, you know, what it's like to be uh, one of your first days cutting grass. Yes, and that's what the case is there. Um, just by the speed, she went around that corner. Because I remember being young, 16, just on the limit. Uh, 26, 50 maybe, 21, 40 maybe. Dropped on Fraser, on behind. And just thinking, well, that's good. what speed can I take us around this corner at? You know, you're sort of easing it that wee bit more each time. But like with hindsight, you know, it's like a go kart nearly, you can nearly have a full lick. Because the 2140 is only 30k, you know? Like it is a much, much tougher experience than us, as I said, it's a bell, the 50k tractor with a 1600 hour on. Your first outing. Something I would love to do. See many seagulls we can get. To be fair, all these feet does look well. Like. He's not afraid to hunt for a bargain. He said. You change that class for seven grand or something? What did you change that for then? 6470. That's a big step from 6470. That's a big step. That's what I'm saying. You don't need a wee tractor now. I know, everything that we have now is getting big. You know, the T7 did all the spraying this year. And she's 710 tires on her, like that. You know, she's low ground pressure. Yes. And I'm, our tram lines are as flat as the rest of it. Whereas you go to a lot of other people and their tram lines are bellied out like. Okay. You know, uh, so seeing a big benefit of that. The Mass AI was that 6470 is a fantastic tractor, but whenever you went to haul grain, the 20 ton of grain on her, she was dead. She was she's dead and then she wouldn't hardly stop you. Ah. Uh, she's wild light. Yes. Now, 16 tons of their needs. 200 horsepower. As funny as it sounds like well, what it does. Kurt Ron with a TM 130. 
I know, but it was at 50k. No. Did you have 20,000 grain on it? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's uh, horses for courses. They, uh, oh, I, she would have she done us a long time, just that came up at the right time. Yes. Nobody wanted the driver. A few were looking to do silage. It was a whole crime match of who was taking the 64 70. Uh, everybody wanted one of the other ones, so just thought it would. It cost, what, a seven grand to change. And that's four years for age, the same hours. So we tried. Yes, lad. It's twice, it's twice the size of the tractor, like that's 260 horsepower. And it's got auto steer now as well. And it has auto steer. So the auto steer was an add on. Like I actually bought her for the reason that she had, she's fully auto steer ready. Yes. So whatever I was buying her, I looked up and all I needed was a screen, just a screen. Price of a glass, 12 grand for a screen, for tablet like. <laughs> so that, no, I don't, <laughs> I don't agree with that. It's, it's like, that's, that, you know, it is outrageous. You take that that screen will be no more intelligent than an iPad. Oh, I Oh, like a Microsoft tablet. That's, that's literally what it looks like. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just the fact that it says glass on it. Though. I'll have to wind them up later and say if only she was a variable, well, if only she had a variable box on her, like, oh, she was some tractor, like. <laughs> you see if Connor's going to hit the fence here. Is he? Is he? Is he? Going to be close. Oh, he panicked and went up. I'm guessing that he realised that there was no row left there. And he's just like, oh no, how close to the hedge am I? What all can I tell you now, hey? Do you know what? I'll do a wee tribute. I never was big into me tractor pull, but at the time I was trying to organise a tractor pull. It never came off, it never happened. And one thing after another just it just kinda of fell apart. But the Watt family taught me everything I know about tractor pull. Dougie, uh, Noel and Harky. Now, no one would be best recognised if you've seen the Irish tractor pulling committee sleigh. No one's usually in the driving seat of the cab of that. That's no. Dougie, it's like a weird version of no. You know, I've seen him about, but he hasn't been on the tractor pulling circuit as much as the last couple of years. And Harky was at every tractor pull going trackside. You could not have missed that man. You know, if you've seen him, he was obsessed with masses. Nothing but masses, whatever it is. Oh, Perkins engines and masses. Just nothing like it. No. The legend has left us. Harky is with us no more. That's a sad day. I don't know what happened to Harky. I just saw it on Facebook and I actually seen it the other day as well. He must have been well known out in Europe where tractor pulling is a major sport. Uh, it looked like they were having a and it says on the track, but holds this season for him. I think he built a lot of clutches. Clutches in there, they're not conventional clutches. You notice that they you know, they really wind the, the engine up, and once it gets really going, they basically they drop the clutch hard, and off they take the drag, hard as they go. But I think Hardy built a lot of them for those tractor pulling guys and artists. Power, he knew his machinery. There is a very, very bouncy thing. There's a seagull that's bit the dust. Oh, it wasn't a drone that took it out. <laughs> 